Hi folks, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. Okay, so here we are for another week of fantastic questions. We've got some great ones for you today. Uh, before we get started, though, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. You know all the YouTube things, but most importantly, support the channel by shopping at kendostar.com. Kendostar being the best equipment website in the known galaxy. Of course, I would say that because I own the place, but you don't need to take my word for it. You should, but even if you don't want to take my word for it, you can check out our Trustpilot rating. We're one of the best rated web websites on the internet, not just in the Kendo field. I'm pretty sure everyone in your dojo is using Kendo Star anyway, so get to kendostar.com. Got a bit of a different camera set up today, uh, so I know it's probably not as sharp as my normal one because I'm using a, a webcam rather than my usual sort of trusty uh, Sony camera to do it. Um, that's because I did a live stream yesterday uh, with Jose from Kendo Tips. Um, go and watch it when you've got like five hours to spare because <laughs> <laughs> watching segments maybe uh because like we spent like four and a half nearly five hours just chatting kendall uh all sorts of things we were chatting about uh borger obviously uh <clears throat> we were chatting about kendall how we can improve in kendall all sorts of great things uh it was a really great chat i had a great time over there on his channel so uh, i'll pop a link in the description to the video go over and watch it um, and like I say, it's a long one, so maybe watch it in segments, but I think, I think you'll enjoy it. I had a really great time filming it. Um, so this is my setup from that. Um, also before I jump into these questions, whoo, kicked a bit of a bee's nest, didn't I? Again, last week with, uh, with the, 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 the blocking conversation. I noticed it was the same, uh, cause I can see, you know, like if you comment on my video, I can see what are the comments you've left on my videos very easily. Uh, it was some, some of the, some of the comments were, 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 were similar from the same sort of people that were upset about the, the Uchi Otoshi, uh, <coughs> sorry, Kiri Otoshi, uh, not being an official Kendall Waza, uh, comment that I made, uh, earlier in the year. Um, I, I'd, I'd say, you know, it's mainly down to a habit of not actually listening to what I'm saying and picking out the parts that you want to get triggered by. Um, but, you know, sure. Look, I said what I need to say on the blocking thing. Um, so uh, I think I've made the point quite clear. If you actually listen to what I said, um, you know, you can post comments down there. You can try and be rude to me about it. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, that's fine. Uh, but you don't, you know, um, it's not for me to convince you. Um, if you've got it wrong, you've got it wrong. So... It's not my problem, really. Uh, good luck with it. Um, okay, let's have a look at the questions we've got today. Good evening, Fish Sensei. Not to stir the pot any further on the dodge block matter. <laughs> uh, but I have a question on that regard. Uh, from my lower rank point of view, the, and others in my dojo, including kids, there is a perception that are two styles of kendo. Kihon kendo, called proper kendo, and shiai kendo, by comparison, not so proper. This is a bit confusing as it almost looks like we practice proper kendo during training, but it's shiai time, so there's a bit of a leeway that allows us to do weird stuff to attempt scoring ippon. I'd appreciate your opinion in order to understand this matter and being able to explain it to the other dojo members if they ask many thanks so my take on this is there is no shiai kendo or grading kendo or stuff like that um there's good kendo correct kendo and then there's not kendo okay or, or doing it incorrectly um doing it incorrectly doesn't win you shiai it doesn't you have to do good kendo to win the shiai the criteria for you called that to require you to do uh good kendo in order to score the valid strikes so um <clears throat> excuse me uh that's that's the thing about it uh i understand where it comes from all right but look look at it this way if you look at the very best kendo guy in the world the best players in the world the best shiaisha in the world they all either are already or go on to achieve very high dan grades most of them end up as hachidan so um you know, it's not that they've got bad Kendo. So yeah, it's it's not really that there's like grading Kendo, Shiai Kendo, 
the you know to to win the Shia, you have to you have to do the good kendo. That's that's part of what is you call that otter. Um, it's that the strategy strategy is different, all right? So I really hate this idea that you should have Shi'ai Kendo and there you don't have to follow the rules or something like that because it's not it's not true. Um, if, if you do rubbish Kendo and Shi'ai, you either lose or you don't score any points. Um, and obviously the, uh, what do you say, um, criteria is lowered for lower level pr practitioners. So I think that's where this comes from is because usually like Kyusha or early Dan grades are in low level tournaments where the Shimpan are quite like kind on allowing Ippon. Um, and then they get this idea that, oh, well, I can do this in the Shi'ai and still get the point. But once you start getting into real Shi'ai, real level Shi'ai, that doesn't, doesn't cut it. So you have to do the good Kendo to, to win the Shi'ai as well. So <clears throat> I'd um, I really would move away from this idea that there's proper kendo and not proper shiai kendo. You have to do proper correct kendo to win shiai. Um, all the best shiai shiai kendo guy in the world, all the best most successful ones I should say, um, all have got fantastic wonderful kendo. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next on, hi Sensei. Uh, Sensei, sometimes I train with a person below me in rank who constantly dodges the men blow with his head in Jigeko and he does it very cleverly. Should I tell him not to dodge or should I work better on my kendo to finally hit a good men? Uh, for example, during the semi, I admit the kensen to hide the beginning of the attack. So it really depends on your uh, relationship with the person. They are not doing themselves a favor. Um, if, if it depends how how much there is a difference in the rank but if you're doing like gokaku geiko type keiko where you're kind of doing the competitive type keiko which most people do like if you're not a dojo leader you're not a sensei i wouldn't uh take that stance um it's not his fault that your attacks are missing it's yours for not having the good enough strikes to be able to uh, defeat his dodge um the good men strike should happen when um you know well, regardless of the, the, them trying to dodge or not. And there's lots of ways to get around the dodge, yeah? You can get them to strike, so you can do Dabano Waza or Ojo Waza. You can do, uh, you can make the strike when they don't expect you to strike. You can use the semi and get them when they're kind of in between their thoughts. You can make strikes at a different angle, so even if they dodge to the side, it, it hits. Uh, if they dodge backwards like this and you hit the Mengane, that's still considered a valid strike. So you can consider that a valid strike. Um, so there's there's ways around it, but it's definitely not. Don't blame the other person. Um, consider it your job to improve your men's strikes so that you can still make them successfully. Okay. And if you're out there doing kendo in a dojo with like one of your peers or someone who's not a particularly lower rank than you, like in a in a big way, um, you know and you can't hit them because they're dodging it's your fault not theirs uh right uh hi andy i ho hope you're doing well i have a question about measuring for kendogi i'm 180 centimeter tall but when i measure the uh, uh, abc part shown on the kendo style website the equ equals size three but my height equals to size four uh am i measuring something wrong should i follow the abc measurements for my height when buying a new kendogi thanks for the show and the great products best thing to do get your get the kendogi that you've got that fits you the best right get the if you don't already have a ken doggy that fits you well use the height as the main way of deciding if you already have a ken doggy that fits you really well lay it flat okay flat and measure it across as per that diagram and choose the one that's closest to the measurements of that uh, and if you've especially if you're looking at a cotton ken doggy if you've got any um sort of uncertainty if they're close or whatever uh get the slightly larger size and the slightly smaller one as it'll shrink a little bit um usually yeah 180 centimeters would definitely be a size four my concern of over a size three is it might be too short and your legs would be exposed at the size of, side of your hakama but if you're already wearing one that fits you well and your legs aren't exposed at the side and your elbows are probably covered and it matches the measurements of a size three, then you could probably okay with a size three, especially if you've got quite a slim build or something like that, okay? So um, I'd bear that in mind as well, okay? I hope that makes sense. Uh, hello, Sensei, a technical issue that is uh, Kendo videos related. How do you get around the YouTube copyright issues when you review videos such as the 70th All Japan Championships? Um, because I'm not stealing the copyright <laughs> is the way I do that. Um, uh necessarily um I, I i can't speak for the original video that i was reviewed in that specific one you mentioned um uh, but often when i do the i'm um 
the uh, the videos um, they are more commentary than there are of the video. So I'm not I'm not just ripping their video and putting it online. Um, the video is about my commentary in reaction to the video, uh, and that that pertains to the majority of the content delivered in the video, um, which is why it doesn't sort of fall under um, the sort of YouTube copyright issues. Um, at least the way I understand them. So, so far, so good anyway. But if I ever had problems with them, obviously I'd have to stop doing it. Uh, <laughs> a question about shouting. I'm still a beginner, so at this stage, I have to call out a target when performing a waza. But when I watch videos online or when I participate in practice with the higher level members in, in my club, um, it seems like they're just shouting and aren't actually saying anything. I asked one of my teachers at which point we stopped shouting men or kode while attacking, but his response was that I should continue to say them. Perhaps I misunderstood my teacher or perhaps he misunderstood me. Do you have any thoughts regarding this? Yes, I do. Also, not much of a question, but rather a question about you. Uh, have you mentioned in any of the previous videos about how or why you got into kendo and what made you go to Japan and then eventually back to the UK? I've heard you discuss bits and pieces in some of your videos, but if you don't mind sharing, I'm curious what the full story is. Yeah, sure. Um, so for the first part about the shouting, they ask, it, I know it doesn't sound like it, but especially if you watch the Japanese players, I know it doesn't sound necessarily like they're shouting men, kote donski, but they are. It, uh, if you understand Japanese, you can actually pick it out a little bit. And um, so, you know, because I can understand Japanese quite well, I can, I can hear them saying it, but it's, they're not enunciating it clearly, but I can s tell the difference between them saying men, kote donski. Um, but I know when I didn't understand Japanese that I, I didn't realise that or think that either. Um, so they are actually saying that and you should continue to keep saying men kote donski. And you'll, you'll, you'll start to develop your own way of saying it. Um, but you are still actually technically saying it. Okay. Um, about uh, my sort of origin story. Yeah. Um, I won't go to it here because it's very long, uh, but I think you should watch, there's two videos you should watch. One is the live stream I did with Jose yesterday uh, at, at Kendo Tips. As I say, there's a link in the description because I talked all about that. So also I did a podcast with uh, Tokushikai uh, in Canada. Um, I think it was, it was their episode number 41 <coughs> where, yeah, I uh, <coughs> talked about, um, well, I talked about, my sort of background in Kendall as well. I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. Um, and yeah, you can go and watch that if you want to know about how I got to where I am. <laughs> At least the abridged version. Uh, right. Uh, hi Andy Sensi, first of all, I want to take this time to thank you for the Kendo advice video you did for my friend and I. Oh, no problem. Uh, with your help and support and encouragement, I was able to successfully pass fifth down this weekend. So I have two questions for Sue. Well done. Good job. <clears throat> I'm really glad that that was, that was useful. I'm really happy that you got through the exam. First of all, uh, are there generic focus or advice that you would have in terms of focusing on how to prepare for the sixth dance, sh prepare for the sixth dance uh, shinsa down the road? Or is it a case by case, person by person? Secondly, as we get older, we tend to stay within our comfort zone and organize our life the same way here. Yeah. Do you have any advice on stress handling to avoid stage fright and freezing up uh, that one could practice inside or outside Kendall pre preparation? Thank you. Um, so the first question about uh, generic advice for sick then, no, obviously there is individual person by person advice as well. Of course, that is the thing. But in general, um, I think that for sick then, in my experience, when I was when I was um, obviously trying out for it, uh, when I tried for it, I should say, um, and uh, was successful, um, and every successful grade in for six dan pretty much I've seen seems to have the same thing in common. And that is that to pass the exam, you have to understand the concept of uh, Sen or taking the initiative. I talked about this as well in my podcast, in the podcast yesterday with um, the live stream, sorry, yesterday with, uh, with, with Kendall tips. Um, Cause he asked me the same question. It's, it's, it's really about, it's really about um, this, ability to take the initiative and make the situation happen. This, I believe, is uh, that demonstration of the hinkaku, the, the, the quality or dignity that they are looking for in a high grade candidate like for sixth dan or seventh dan uh, and eighth dan. Um, 
and it manifests in different ways the further up the ladder you get but i think in the in the sense of sigdan i think that this is where it where it turns up is is this this idea of being able to take the initiative this here come on let's go and then making something happen all right so i want i i want to study that um if you watch the the high level gradings um that's what i think you'll see um i've talked about it a lot as well um largely because it's been such a big focus for my own kendall about staying within your comfort zone organizing your life the same way and advice on stress handling it's difficult it really is it really is i understand that i do um i was i was obviously really nervous before my last exam but i think it's kind of natural isn't it? it's part of it and i think that's it's it's kind of the important part of it, I guess. Um, I think one of the things about the grading exams is you have to be nervous for them, uh, for them to really do what they're supposed to do for us. So I don't know if there's a lot you can do necessarily to completely av avoid it, but you just have to do your best to keep yourself calm. And remember that, you know, obviously we want to pass. And it's the same with Shi'i. Um, obviously you want to win, but if, if it doesn't go the way that you want it to it's not the end of the world worse things could happen um and you, you know it, it it's it's a it's a vehicle to move yourself forward to the next one so that's what i think i'd say in regards to that i know it's not the best advice in the world but that is definitely an individual thing how we each deal with stress and and that sort of thing um but i think it, it is just a case of trying to overcome that and accept that there'll be consequences either way and they might not be might not they might not be the the favorable consequences but even if in that case it, it it'll be a positive experience and you'll be able to move forward from it uh next oh i still have one more question this came up at the most recent she said the double bow you're not really in control of how far the other person comes out so what if they're super tall and you're super short heaven forbid that they actually took such big steps out that you can't make it to the starting line in three graceful steps what do you do take more than three steps gracefully line up and evenly so what you're talking about here is like in sometimes when you do gradings there's like um when one candidate comes off the other one's waiting and you, you do the day together um the person who's leaving does their day to exit whereas this this kind of does the day to enter at the same time and they go off and then you do your three steps sort of on towards the court um so what you're saying is is if if this person's very tall and they take massive steps back and you're supposed to line up with them and do the day and then you don't you know it's too far for you to get there um there's two things I would, there's a couple of things I'd suggest, I guess, uh, with this. First is if it's possible, try, as soon as you, I try and stand where you want them to finish, <laughs> right? Uh, I'd try and stand at the point where you want them to finish. So you already know you've got three steps worth of room there. Um, and if, uh, if they don't, it's not the end of the world. And if you don't have the chance to do that, I'd come and I'd stand where it's three steps in rather than necessarily directly next to them. If for some reason I had to stand directly next to them and I found myself in the situation I've done day and now I've got a long way to go to those three steps, then I'd, 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 I'd on the fly figure out where I'm going to take that adjustment. So whether that's going to be... Uh, I'd come here and then I'm next to this guy. He's about... I can see he's coming ready this... That, that that line's really far away. I'm going to do day here and probably take a small step before I take my three steps forward so I can adjust that distance there. Um, or I take my three steps and if I'm still far away from the line, take another tiny step so that I'm up to the line before as a drawdown to Sonkyo um, is, is another way you can do it. As long as you do it in a way that isn't like obvious to everyone, oh no, look, we didn't quite line up, you know, and, and it's done subtly and gracefully i don't think it's a problem you know what i mean i think i think you'll be okay there okay next one um hi andy sensei i have a question about grading for shodan i am currently first queue and i received earlier this year there's another grading earlier the month uh this month and a lot of my seniors are shocked that i wouldn't grade for first dan they said my ability is worthy of first dan so really so i should really just grade and get my first dan uh, the same idea is also shared by my sensei saying i'm more than capable of taking the first dan exam personally i don't think that i'm capable of being first dan i set two specific goals before i go for first dan 
first is being, first is being more aware of the Shi'i instead of randomly throwing Waza and hoping it lands. Second, through my, th this might sound stupid, is to build courage to train with higher level Senpai and Sensei without excessive fear. I've yet to achieve my second goal. My question is, is there an advantage of doing first and grading earlier than later? How much should we, uh, should the way of our sensei and sen senior and sensei see our skill level determine our pacing and grading? Lastly, do you have any tips to help me achieve my second goal faster? Thank you in advance for the advice and hope my seniors don't recognize me from the question. Um, so I agree with your seniors and your sensei. Um, the first thing I'd say is you are putting far too much emphasis and importance on first dan. First dan is a grade for 13 year old children, okay? For the vast majority of people, all right? It is not a high grade, it is the first grade, all right? It's the first beginner's grade. You are not an expert at first dan. You are not a black belt, we don't have belts. People often describe, oh, I'm a third degree black belt. I used to, I think as well, you know, like when I was telling people at people at my, you know, my friends or whatever that didn't do kendo because they didn't know what it meant. So I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm a third degree black belt actually. Uh, and it made you sound good, but we all know the truth, all right? These things you're talking about, being aware of the Shia instead of randomly throwing waza and being able to practice these scenes without fear, that's not the criteria for the first dan. That's, that's not it at all. So uh, is there any advantage of doing first and earlier than later? Yes, you should do your gradings as early as you possibly can because without, if you're holding yourself back knowing that you can pass but you don't, uh, don't take the grading, uh, you're holding back your progression. You are holding back your progression. You need to, you need to achieve that grade so that you can continue to progress, okay? Um, and you should trust your seniors and your sensei in this part where you say about the pacing of the grading. If they tell you you're ready, then they believe that you're ready and you should go and try and do it. Um, about achieving your second goal about without being able to practice with your senpai and sensei without excessive fear, the, is, the, 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 the two pieces of advice I give you on that is one, take the first dan, uh, and I think that will help you towards that. Um, and secondly, um, it's practice. You just have to keep doing it. Everybody feels fear when they're with their senses. That's the point. Okay, so don't worry about it too much. Don't place too much pressure on yourself. Okay, you'll be fine. Get the first dan, work towards third dan. Kendall starts from third dan, all right, really. Um, that's going to be a controversial one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you know, in a video game, like in these modern video games, you have to kind of clear the game before you actually play the real end game stuff. Like I used to play Destiny a lot. Um, as many as you might know, if you watched Kendo Game, I used to play it with some of my lads from the from the GB team and stuff uh, on, on stream. Um, you know, you've got to clear that game before you actually start to access the real content of the game. That's when the game really starts, is after you complete the first the, the actual, you know, the, the story of the game. That is the Kendo equivalent equivalent of getting to third dan, all right? That's the Kendo equivalent of getting to third dan. Then, as some would say fifth dan. <laughs> some would say fifth dan. There's an argument for that too. Um, I'm, I'd, I'll say third dan, um, all right? Um, so don't put too much pressure on yourself and don't over, uh, over sort of, you know, emphasize this idea first on. Uh, <clears throat> next one. Hello, Andy. I hope you're well. I've been thinking recently about getting a white gear and hacker man, perhaps eventually a white burger. I find the overall white look absolutely awesome. I know it'll get a bit stained during practice, but what are you going to do? Uh, I can answer that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I've read it's traditionally worn by female Kendall Cut. Yeah. Uh, would it be looked would I be looked down upon as a risk? Uh, and risk scorn if I wore white ball outside my dojo or should I get one anyway and discard my any opinion if anyone else has uh, I can handle a raised eyebrow too but I'd rather not risk genuine offence I apologise if you tackle this question already uh, domo arigato gozaimashita, gozaimashita. Uh, it's, I'm going to be nitpicky on your spelling <laughs> let me switch my Japanese on it's domo <laughs> domo arigato gozaimashita you missed a little oot <laughs> uh, so um, the questions we've got here let me switch my computer back to English right uh, <laughs> um, right mm. yeah traditionally the white bog is for women uh, females uh, usually little girls 
Um, there's not many adult women that use it. Um, there's a couple of universities, not a couple, there's one or two schools or universities that use um, use it as their Shiai Borgo as a team, uh, which can, you know, it's, it's kind of just a cool look or it's a bit intimidating for the rival teams. But in general, um, it's it's not a it's not a, a common thing. I would recommend against white white burger, frankly. Um, it's very hard to get a good quality white burger set. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult to do. Um, you end up paying a lot of money for the sake of it being white rather than it being the good quality burger set. For the same money, you get a much better burger set. And it's a phase. Sorry, it's a phase. It's like wanting to do Nido or wanting to do Jordan. For the vast majority of people, it's a phase. Once you get past, once you clear the, once you clear the first part of the game and get to third dan, you're not gonna want to wear a white burger, all right? Because most people don't. I used to be like this too. Don't get me wrong. I've worn some pretty wacky burger in my time, and even now I'm quite flamboyant with the burger I like to wear, right? But full white burger, let's let's probably give up on that one um it is going to get dirty for a start and look if you absolutely got your heart set on it fine but at least talk it over with your sensei especially if you're planning to go to different places because what you do in other places reflects on your sensei as well as just yourself uh all right so it's all right saying you don't mind raising eyebrows eyebrows uh but they're not necessarily just being raised towards you they're being raised towards your teacher as well and the people that you represent so that's just something else that's worth bearing in mind um but i really would recommend against you throwing a load of money at white burger which i just think the majority of people that do that probably regret um i know there's uh, there's very occasionally you'll see adult men in japan that wear white burger um they're usually pretty um what do you call like unique characters um and that's fine no like nobody treats them bad or something um for doing that you know nobody's like oh look at that, that weirdo i mean obviously there's, there's raised eyebrows like that's bold um but nobody's like well he has no right to wear that or something like that there's not it's not like that either so um but what i'm conscious of is for the context of kendo outside of japan where we spend a lot of money on borg set um and i know that these things can very much be you know look i would once you get to third dan if you still want a white burger set maybe think about getting one then and i'm not saying it because you have to have a certain amount of skill to deserve one what i'm saying is is you'll know for certain then whether it's definitely what you want and it's not just a phase that you're going through all right i hope that makes sense i, I don't mean to be negative or put you off it but yeah. <laughs> Hello, Sensei. Two questions, please. When I was in Japan, I noticed some dojos had these wooden plaques at the entrance of the dojo. Are these the name tags to show who's training there today? If not, what is it and how is it used? Uh, two, I've seen some online videos of Sensei doing some really hardcore kick with their students. The students seem to be junior high, uh, junior or high school students, and the Sensei seems to push them around a lot, even making them fall to the ground. There's also an incident where they one Sensei pushed the junior up against the wall and held them there. What's the point of these exercises? And are they more... Japanese cultural exercises rather than kendo related exercises. I've comments before saying it's to toughen them up. Seems a bit extreme though. <laughs> um, okay, one, uh, I think what you're talking about is the nafuda kake, which is um, at lots of dojos that are permanent dojos. You'll have, th there'll be a board and it has lots of little wooden plaques, like you say with people's names on. It's not who's at training today. It's usually the, the, the members of the dojo. Uh, and if it's at a high school, it's the the graduate not the graduates but the ones at the high school they can often or, or university they can run around the whole dojo like at the top because like when somebody when when a new year joins all the members of the kendall club get one and then it stays there <laughs> so that keeps going then so you can see like and it there's it's, it's it's marked with the year that they joined or the when they graduated whatever i can't remember which it depends probably on the place but at the year that they um that it's marked by the year so you can go back there and you can see oh in this year such a such person was here um it's like kind of leaving their mark on the door Joe. um about the hardcore keiko <laughs> mm. Mm. uh right yeah from a western point of view it's extreme isn't it i guess um 
but the the purpose of that it's not a japanese cultural exercise it's kendo related yes it is it's um it's to to toughen the spirits the spirit and the uh the determination of the students um and it's necessary to create strong kendoka it's necessary there's i don't think there's um I don't think there's many uh, kendoka that get really, really strong without having experienced that at some point, uh, to be honest. Um, it doesn't really fly in the West because most of us are a little bit, a little bit, dare I say, self-important for it. Um, I struggle with it at first. I've experienced it too, of course. Um, I struggle with it with myself, myself at first. Um, I, how, why should I be treated like this sort of thing? Um, but you know, once I sort of realized that it was for my benefit, Sensei does it out of kindness, not out of, um, not out of malice. That's what's difficult to grasp. Um, and you, you know, you have to realize this is, this is what is expected of the senseis in many, many cases. Um, it's... <laughs> It's not that extreme either, to be honest. You know, the it's hard, it's tough, but it's not like that bad. I guess sometimes it is actually. Sometimes I've seen it bad. I've never seen. I've seen it worse than any of the videos that you that you've seen. Let's put it that way. All right, but the bad stuff doesn't make it on the internet. Um, recently, there's been a bit of a shift in Japan. There's more sort of westernized mindset there with with parents. So. You know, I, I think we're starting to see a decline in it, but I do think it'll have consequences. The, the best players still have experienced a lot of that. Um, yeah, uh, it's difficult. It's difficult It's uh, to wrap your head around from a Western point of view. But if you look at it and look at it as extreme or bullying or, 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 or being mean, um, yeah, you are approaching it with a Western mindset. Um, it is done from a um a place of kindness and care um the senseis that don't care about the, the if the if the, the kids that the senseis don't care about they don't do that too they just don't bother they don't waste their effort on it um so yeah um it's it's difficult to understand uh, and you can't you shouldn't do it in your door during the west because it, it won't fly <laughs> Okay, last one. Hi, Andy. Out of pure curiosity, is a tri triangular grip Shinaya thing or just an urban legend uh, that everybody repeats but no one has actually seen? You mean like a Toblerone <laughs> Shinai? <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of anything like that. I've never even heard of an urban legend like that. I've never heard of anything like that. Um, I can't imagine the benefit of it. Seems pretty uncomfortable. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. All right. And let's not try and make it a thing. <laughs> All right. That's it. Thank you for joining me today. Um, like, share, subscribe, shop at Kendall Star. See you next time. Bye-bye.